Last time on Take One, there was news about men's basketball, a giant duck named Joy, and some fun facts that no one really needed to know. On this week's episode, the smoke in the Treasure Valley, football, and spirit of Boise. Also, just for some laughs, a strange museum, and Ryan will probably interrogate some unfortunate people somewhere on campus. These stories and more, up next on Take One. Welcome to the one and only Take One. I'm Madeline Molitor, and for most of summer, it's been hard to ignore that haze in the air, the bright red sun, and the suffocating feel of smoke. But it doesn't appear like things are going to get better just yet. Air quality has been fluctuating between orange and red categories as of lately, and it's been especially bad down in Utah. The smoke in the Treasure Valley is a mixture of smoke from fires in Northern California, Western Oregon, and near Stanley, Idaho. Outdoor events are starting to be postponed and canceled as it becomes unhealthy to stay outside for long periods of time. But hopefully, the rain from last weekend pushed some of the smoke out of the area and we can look forward to some sunny skies once more. Now, over to you, Sierra. Thanks, Madeline. Have you ever wondered why Boise State's colors are blue and orange? Well, today you're going to find out. Boise State started out as Boise Junior College with the colors red and black. This was based off the second-hand uniforms from the Boise High School football team. But in the 1930s, two men, Preston Hale and Owen Sproat, decided to change the colors for the fo new football team to something more unique and named them the Broncos. They chose orange and blue because there were no teams in the area with that color combination and they really wanted to stand out with the contrasting vivid colors. Then, in, our, in the 1940s, our school became Boise State University. This even inspired Jean Blameyer, the athletic director in 1986, to come up with the idea for the blue turf that is now known worldwide. And now you know. Now over to Jenna. Thanks, Sierra. The countdown to the second kickoff on the blue is officially on. The Broncos will take on the Oklahoma State Cowboys Saturday, September 18th in Albertson Stadium. Boise State Athletics is allowing a full capacity stadium this fall in order to help cheer on the Broncos. The theme for this home game is a blue out, so be sure to rep your favorite team and bring the noise. If you cannot make it to the game in person, you can still cheer on the Broncos from home on the Fox Sports 1 channel with kickoff at 7 o'clock. The Broncos are now 1-1 one one with a blowout win against UTEP last weekend. I am so excited for kickoff this week on the Blue. I hope to see everyone there, and as always, go Broncos. Now, Ani tells us about the spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. We're here at Ann Morrison Park celebrating the 30th anniversary of Spirit of Boise. Hi, I'm Annika Mechikoff, and this is what to know about Spirit of Boise. Held annually at Ann Morrison Park, the Spirit of Boise Hot Air Balloon Festival celebrated its 30th year anniversary. Since the event's inception in 1991 by balloonist Scott Spencer, the Spirit of Boise Festival enchants visitors from all over the country with its five-day event during the first week of September. Every morning, the balloons will inflate simultaneously just as the sunrise peaks over the Boise mountain range. Magical music fills the air as the cold melts away with the heat of the burners and the balloons stand up. These balloons fill Boise's sky all weekend and can be seen all around town and even land in several locations, including campus. Not only do the balloons offer attraction as you gaze up into the sky in the morning, but the event also features a night glow spectacular. On this night, balloons light up, dancing to music as their burners illuminate the envelopes. This free attraction brings friends and families together for a one-of-a-kind Boise experience. It is loved and cherished by many and will continue its legacy for years to come. I'm Monica Mechikoff and that was What to Know about Spirit of Boise. So Ani, that's one of my favorite traditions that Boise has to offer. It is so beautiful. Now let's head over to the Spec Studio with our new anchors, Melina and Kyle. Thanks, Jenna. Kyle, how is your semester going so far? You know, it's actually going pretty well at the moment. A lot of work going on, but mm -hmm. rugby is right around the corner. Ooh, pretty excited for that. That is yeah. exciting. Um, it would be pretty strange to find yourself face to face with a snake while browsing through your local grocery store. But for our friends in the land down under, it's just another Wednesday. An Australian woman found herself in this exact situation while strolling through the spice aisle. A 10 foot long python was inches away from her before she noticed. 
Thankfully, this woman happened to be a professional snake catcher. I know, what are the odds? So after going home and grabbing her snake bag, she was able to get the snake out of the store and return it to its natural habitat. She believes it was possibly there looking for a mate. In Croatia, there's a magical place called Fragiland, a museum full of displays of taxidermied frogs. Inside there are 507 frogs in various dioramas mimicking human life. Froggyland is one of the most popular attractions in the area. Most people stop in there, then to the nearby art museum, archaeological, or Game of Thrones museums. The frogs are extremely realistic, and it's almost comical to view them in these scenes, like in a courtroom, classroom, or out in the water. But the owner says that the locals are not a fan. They'd rather eat the frogs than make them into art, he says. American and British tourists are the biggest fans, and after the loss in profits due to the pandemic, the owner's starting to look through offers from American investors, so one day maybe Froggy Land could be in your backyard. Ooh, would you go if it came here? You know, as long as there's like a Kermit the Frog kind of ride, <laughs> I might hop over Lily Patter 2 to make my way there. You don't want to be too mad at that. All right, let's send outside to Ryan for some controversial questions. Ladies and gentlemen, it's secret outside the spec. Let's go. I wasn't here Monday. I'm sorry. I know you missed me. I was getting a COVID test. And guess who's negative? This guy. Turn me up. That's what I'm saying. All right. Well, we got a couple special guests here and uh, a couple familiar faces as well. We're going to start with our first one here. My lady, how you doing? Good. How are you? What's your name? Lexi. Okay, Lexi, I got a couple questions for you. So here we go. First one. What is the most obnoxious thing people do with their cell phones? That's a good question. I would say, you know when adults go to restaurants and it's kind of like poorly lit, kind of dark inside, yeah. and they pull out their phone, turn their flashlight on, and turn it on just to read the menu. I think it's pretty obnoxious. I would have to agree. And like, if it's like really dark, I get it. That makes sense. Yeah. But like when it's lit enough where like everyone else doesn't need a flashlight, it's like, what are you doing? Yeah, and they turn it on the absolute brightest they can. It's ridiculous. Okay, last question, here we go. What is the most overhyped food you've ever eaten? So I'm not gonna lie, I'm a big Trader Joe's gal, but I would have to say their cauliflower gnocchi is one of the biggest overhyped things, I think. Now does everyone like that? A lot of people do. Personally, I do not. I think it's, it's not very good. Doesn't sound very good. No. So I, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lexi. You were thank awesome. You. I appreciate yeah. you. And now, Mr. Monday's host himself. I forgot his name. What's your name, sir? Ben Luca. Ben Luca. How are we doing? I don't know how you forgot that. Your best friend. But uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. I don't know Glad about best be friend, here. but uh, <clears throat> anyways, so let's just get into the questions. <laughs> okay, here we go. First question When is the most appropriate time? to swear at customers? Um, when they don't finish their food, you know? Ooh. It's just like, well, you just paid all this money, you're just gonna leave half a sandwich behind? Like, what's up with that? That could go to a homeless person, it could go to me, but I'm not allowed to eat it, so. So what happens when they ask for a box and they choose like not to waste it, they'll eat it later? Uh, what happens when they choose a box? Well, they'll eat it later, so it's fine. I'll still say, what the H, dude, because. Thank you for. Yeah. Censoring yourself. I got you. I got you. Next, next question. Okay, next question. Here you go. You ready? Oh, yeah. What is the most overhyped movie you have ever seen? Hmm. Any one of the four Transformer movies, or honestly, any of the nine Fast and Furious. They're just, I don't know why they keep making those movies, but um, yeah, I don't like any of them. I'm gonna kind of have to agree with you there. It's like, when are we gonna stop? Yeah. When Vin Diesel dies, I guess, but he's never going to die because he has family. And that's what's most important, right? Well, there you have it, folks. It's all about family. I'm your host, Secret. We're going to send it back to the main stage in the spec. Ooh, those were some good questions. Definitely some one-sided ways on those. Yeah, what's your overrated food? Now, this might cause some controversy, but pineapple on pe pizza overrated not everything needs to be sweet and savory it's good it is it's how can you how can you not love it you don't put apples on a burger <sighs> that but that's just it's a good combo you can't be mad at that 
Agree to disagree. All right. All right. So now, how about this? What is the most annoying thing someone can do on their mobile device? It's putting your call on speaker, unless it's a juicy story, unless it's got me hooked, amazing plot line. I don't, I don't, it doesn't need to be on speaker. Yeah, I agree with you completely on that. For me, the biggest thing is anytime somebody goes to a concert and mm -hmm. feels the need to put the entirety of the concert <laughs> on the internet. Yeah. I didn't pay for my ticket to go, right. so I don't need totally. to see the entire concert. Definitely. Now, let's see what the producers have dug up from the archives this week for our flashback segment. Welcome to BTV, the answers you never wanted to know. Do you think you can play ring toss with a giraffe? You can ring, play ring toss with where my heart used to be. What was going on? I mean, you could do anything you want to, but I don't think they'd appreciate it. Depends on how big the hoop is. Right, that's right. If an ape and a zebra had a baby, what would it look like? You. <laughs> Um, something from my nightmares. Thank I you. I don't actually want to see that happen now. You know, I'll, let me kind of hear it. If I let all of the animals out of the zoo, what do you think would happen? I'd die. That's the apocalypse. Okay. I mean, all the zoos would be out. All the if there's a pig in the zoo and I let it free, is it the apocalypse? If you light it on fire. Ha, <laughs> puns. <laughs> What do you think could happen if I lit the whole zoo on fire? I would love you forever. Oh. oh. Lighting a whole zoo on fire? I would be horrified. Thank you for joining us with BTV's The Answers You Never Wanted to Know. We'll see you next time. So that's... I, I'll be honest, I didn't need to know that. I, I don't think I did. Uh, I wasn't sh okay. That's a. What do you so? What would you even call a zebra, gorilla, like mix? Like, so zorgilla? I, I don't know. I can't, <laughs> I've been thinking about this for the past fifteen seconds. I can't wrap my brain around it. I'm not sure how to follow follow that, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, now let's send it back over to the 360 studio. Thanks, Kyle. I know this might be a crazy concept to understand, but in the past decade, life has changed. The news and information that we consume is now entirely on our phones, and this is all coming from a million different sources. So, we've all had to learn, mostly on our own, who to trust when it comes to important things. But now, the state of Illinois has become the first U.S. state to make a news literacy class a requirement for graduation. This goes into a full effect starting in the 2022 to 2023 school year. Other states and high schools across the country offer similar courses, but it hasn't become a requirement in any other state just yet. A course like this is gonna give students the ability to fact check information and determine if sources are reliable or not. This is a skill that is becoming incredibly useful, and hopefully there is a noticeable difference after this requirement is put into place. Wow, time flies when you're having fun. It looks like that's all the time we have for today. Thanks to all the crew and writers for this episode. I'm Madeline Molitor. I'm Sierra Lewis. And I'm Genevieve Amonti. Join us next time where we'll discuss the Boise Pride Parade and how a giant rat connects to free speech. We'll see you next time on Take One.